getting ready to go to space. In 2008, artists and scientists constructed a model of our solar system to a scale of 1 to 1 billion between St Kilda and Port Melbourne. So instead of navigating 5.9 billion kilometres from the Sun to Pluto, you only walk 5.9 kilometres. So Miss Osborne and Mr Horman travelled the whole solar system in one afternoon. Here's our first destination. The Sun is a fiery ball of gas at the centre of the solar system. It produces enormous amounts of energy through its surface as heat and light. No, stop! Mr Horman, never look directly into the Sun. Always wear protective eyewear. Ah! <sighs> <laughs> Just like we orbit the Sun, the Moon orbits us. The Earth orbits the Sun once every 365.25 days. It takes the Moon about 28 days to orbit around the Earth. <sighs> 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 We've arrived at our next destination. Mercury is 58 million kilometres from the Sun. During the day, Mercury's surface can reach more than 432 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt metal. At night, temperatures can drop below an icy negative 180 degrees Celsius. <laughs> We've reached our next destination. Venus is the second planet and 108 million kilometres from the Sun. It is often called Earth's sister because of its similar size to our planet. The atmosphere on Venus is poisonous to humans, so if we breathed it in, we would die. We've arrived at our next destination. Earth is the third planet and 147.1 million kilometres from the Sun. We were very excited to get home on our trip around the solar system. Earth is an active planet made up of liquid and solid rock. The Moon is a natural satellite locked into the Earth's orbit through gravity. The Moon also has gravitational forces that affect the Earth. These pull our oceans a few metres in one direction over the day, creating low and high tides. If you shouted on the Moon, no one would hear you because there is nothing to carry the sound. The Moon is completely silent. We've reached our next destination. Mars is the fourth planet and 227.9 million kilometres from the Sun and is known as the Red Planet. When the Romans looked at Mars, they were reminded of blood, so they named the planet after their god of war. 
Mars has two lumpy moons. They have Greek names which mean terror and fear. Scientists have sent robots to explore Mars and they think that life might once have existed on Mars. Between Mars and our next destination is a very dangerous part of our journey. We have to travel through the asteroid belt. We've arrived at our next destination. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun and the largest in the solar system. It is two and a half times bigger than all the other planets combined. Jupiter has 64 moons. In fact, you can see Jupiter's moons with a pair of binoculars. One day on Jupiter lasts only 9 hours and 50 minutes. Jupiter spins so fast that it pulls the gas around with it, creating those lines on its surface. We've reached our next destination. It's easy to distinguish Saturn from the other planets because of its ring belt. When we look at Saturn from Earth, the rings are seen at different angles depending on the time of year. Saturn has some amazing lightning storms, 1,000 times more powerful than the ones we have here on Earth. We've arrived at our next destination. Uranus is the seventh planet. All the other planets so far can be seen from Earth with the naked eye. On Uranus, a day is 17 hours and 14 minutes. Uranus has 27 moons. Pfft, that's nothing compared to Jupiter though. It was the first planet in our solar system to be discovered with the telescope. We've reached our next destination. Here we are at Neptune. It is sometimes called the blue planet because it has a rich blue colour. Being so far away, it takes Neptune 165 years to complete a single orbit of the Sun. This means that in 2011, Neptune completed its first orbit of the Sun since its discovery in 1846. The winds on Neptune's surface have been recorded at a phenomenal speed, 2,100 kilometres per hour, with surface temperatures that drop to a freezing minus 218. Yikes! We've reached our final destination. When Pluto was discovered in 1930, it became the ninth and last planet in our solar system. However, when the definition of a planet was changed, poor Pluto didn't fit in anymore. So it is now known as a dwarf planet. The good news for Pluto is that it will always be the most famous of the dwarf planets. 177 planets the size of Pluto could fit into Earth. But it still has three moons, Charon, Nix and Hydra. We've 
got a long way to go home. Thanks for joining us on our Solar System Adventure.